Sean, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So basically, we've been trying to get you on the podcast for ages. How long? Well, I, I reckon... That's a lie. That's not a lie. <laughs> but that's a lie because you just... You, all you did is ask me and I said yes. <laughs> I so what are you talking about? Was, <laughs> shush, it's all a facade. God, the ordeal that you went through to yeah, get him on. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's true. Starting off with a massive lie. <laughs> you, know, you asked me, would you like to come on? I said yes. <laughs> Welcome to, ja to Jamie's life. Did you not know how to use a phone before? <laughs> working out how to use the phone? <laughs> That is true, actually. But you you said to me that you've actually blocked your phone, so I think that's why. How, yes. How no, did you manage that? No, so so an, a, an advert came up on, on Instagram, as it sometimes does. Of what? And, of, <laughs> no, of the, is it hair transplants? Of, a, <laughs> <laughs> of an app yeah. to, to block your phone. It cost me 80 quid. And I thought you could like you could decide the hours in which it closes the yeah, app. Yeah. So I I bought it, but so I thought I'll turn off social media from like you know nine till five. Yeah. But I didn't know. Did you know that WhatsApp and texting counts as social media? Oh no! I didn't. Did you know? No, it, it well, does. Yeah. Because I suppose it, it's social. It is social. Yeah. It is social. It depends what you're doing. On it, there you but. go. We're learning so much already. Wait, wait. So wait, so you downloaded this app and immediately your phone just melted and was deactivated. Yeah, and then I couldn't WhatsApp anyone. <laughs> and I couldn't it's, text to anyone. To be fair, it's a fucking good product. The app that was like, you're on your phone too much, download this. Okay, but the, doesn't that's, work. You know, like people talk about mental health, people talk about the yeah. phone and what it's doing, yeah. the damage. You, we have got into, this is how mad it's got. I have got, I bought a phone mm. and I also buy apps. And I have bought an app <laughs> yeah. on the phone that I bought to block me from using <laughs> the apps that I bought on the phone that I bought, like... Have you heard of the app that's now come out to, to, to do the unblocking? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, it's exactly that. I, I was talking about this last night. I, was, I went for dinner with my dad. I was talking to him. And I'm getting married soon. And Yes, I, I saw. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And I was saying this. I was like, life, like what we do in life is we we, we basically give ourselves responsibilities and then we find ways of get, of getting out of the responsibilities or like running away from them. So, uh, how, That's what we do all the time. Why did, so why did this come up? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, was gonna <laughs> say what, what was the segue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got to be careful yeah. there. Dad, Dad, so you know those like big responsibilities, like can you just get out of them? Yeah. Like, is there anything you know, any apps? Like, <laughs> My dad actually last night when we were over dinner, he went, um, so he's taking prenup. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> it was very forward. And I went, what? And he went, nothing. Prenup. <laughs> what the hell is going on? He was like, I don't know, like some heckling me or something. It's impossible to this speech impediment. Like, what? I said, that, that's advice that you're not taking. You, do you think that's what it is? Well, that's you? an awkward, is that an awkward chat to go, maybe we should have a prenup? Well, I don't pre know what the prenup would be for. I have, I have nothing to give, so I don't understand <laughs> it. That's what I don't get. I think, what about an app? Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm not close enough. <laughs> Uh, an app that, uh, you know that app that brings people together? Well, so the Tinders and the, yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, other yeah. ones. Apps. I love it, that's what you call them. You know those apps that uh, bring them together? Well, they do, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they, yeah. Don't, they, they do, do come do. together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, I've, never, I've, I've never I've never, used the. Uh, I never used it. Shut that. up. I actually haven't. <laughs> that is oh, such... Just because you're getting married now doesn't mean you can forget about your past. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. But an a app to uh, break up with people. So how not, it, not just an app. Yeah. I don't know. I was thinking AI maybe would probably answer this. Now. There's a team, right? There's a team that you go to and you Specialists. say, "Listen, I want a specialist." And you go, you say, "I want to break up with my partner," mm. and and they deal with it. <laughs> oh my God. Like a Sorry, I'm not no, trying no, no, to no. get out. Of no, that. Sean, Sean, <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's brilliant. One, one step further, and it's a hitman. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's marriage coming up. <laughs> There's what? so many people that would do. I, I mean, younger, not. Not old, but when you were younger, that would be a great. I app. admire. I always used to admire the people who would go. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, oh, a friend of mine. He's an old friend of mine, and he um he said he was with his girlfriend for a long time, and he really wanted to break up with her. And yeah. and you could sort of see, you know, when you can see it on someone, but they just don't know how to do it. Mm. And the way, and he was one of these people who could just, he would then just one time did it. And the way that he did it is he was watching a um, World War I documentary oh, with, her, with her, with her. <laughs> and he, in his mind, went, well, if they can run out the trenches, I could do it. I think we should break up. <laughs> he turned to her. Oh my God. Just as the whistle goes. <laughs> He's like, right, that's he, me. <laughs> he did it. He sort of said, if they can do it, because notoriously yeah, I, in the past, not that I, remember, I was so bad at breaking out with people. Yes. Like, I, I, I don't know. 
Are you a people person? Is that why they're... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. We're gonna we're gonna go down some avenues. Yeah, I don't yeah, wanna... yeah. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, I got to use. Here's your question. The, what you are you? The reason you think an app would be a good idea to break up with people mm. is because are, are you a people person? Is that your question? Well, I think it would be because I think it's I, just you don't like awkward people. Don't want to confront awkward awkward things they don't want to do it no and it's awkward to do that yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> yeah so what you would do is you would download the app and you would say uh and and also in this app i think you would have you, you could want, you could pick sort of it'd be brutal severi severity levels yeah. as well like yes you know, com compassionate terms or yes. is it like i fucking hate you <laughs> like or, or the death fake death yes that's the fake death yeah fake your own death Okay, you think that would work as one? Okay, if we you're can... committed to it. Um, are you are you a people person? Do you do you do you have that thing which I have, which is where you're a people pleaser, or are you quite good at kind of being a bit? That's a good question. What? Was I that? Is that on the notes on your phone? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> if they're just, if it's just listeners and they're not watching it, what was that question? <laughs> are you a, are you a good people person, or are you? <laughs> What? <laughs> Sean, Sean, I... Sean, Sean, a team of researchers has spent a lot of time. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah you so, yeah. You, so you fucking answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like question. a good guess. It's it's a, a, the question is just: Are you a people are you person? A people or person? Not? Yeah, I love the bit at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was your your entire body just crumpling under the weight of the shit. That's the question. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I th I think am I a people? Pl no, I don't. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm a people pleaser. What? What really? What is a people pleaser? Well, I think a people pleaser. If we're talking about breaking up uh, with I people, oh, hang on, we're talking about breaking up with people. Well, if I, we were, I, talk, I thought that was a new well, subject. Guess, but I, if we were talking about breaking up with people, I guess it's an extreme form of people pleasing. With people course. pleasing, you want people to feel happy around you. Yes, at all and you times. don't want to make them feel bad. Also, I want to say, dude, I, I, and you've probably been asked this many times. I watched you in the jungle, and you were just great. Oh yes, it was, Thank it you. was, it was amazing. And you've had this question so many times. But walking in and seeing Matt Hancock there, yes, you, it, the funniest thing about that is you must have gone, ah, oh, this is going to go one way or the other. Well, way. no, what I, I, what I actually thought was when he walked through the bushes, I thought, oh, there's someone I could beat. Beat, beat, beat up. <laughs> I'm going to beat you. <laughs> but it's true. I thought, oh my God, I, can, I, I'm, I might not come last. Yeah, yeah. And then he came third. I mean, it's amazing. So I came fifth. But yeah, I mean, it was. That, what that is was... the pressure like in the jungle? Especially as a comedian. Do you feel like you have to be. Because, you know, the. What happens with comedians when you walk down the street or you go on stage or whatever it is, people think it, they're always funny. They're always on. They're always yeah. that kind of thing. And then when you go into the jungle, we've seen it in the past when other comedians have gone on. Comedians aren't always funny. They're not always, they, they, you know, they're not always <laughs> like that. Do you feel like you had to always be on all the time? No, no, I you was never. I, no, 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 no. I never felt like I was on. Mm. Um, I, I had, you know, I, I was absolutely... You, you know, there's an isolation period, right? Right, where you go to Australia and you're locked, locked in a house for mm. ten days or whatever it is before you go into the jungle. And that, for me, it was the hardest bit because that, for that, that was all of the anxiety. You know, you can imagine just complete and utter dread of uh, uh, why have I, what am I doing here? That that you 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 could possibly be you signed up to go through what you went through. That. Mm. That is the stupid, you know, just in there going, mm. I can't, I, this is the stupid, like, what the fuck am I doing? It's PTSD like, coming back. Totally PTSD coming back. It's just all of the feelings that you had kind of thought you had moved on from yeah. come back. But, but I will say this, because I, 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 it was a wonderful experience. And actually, as soon as I walk through those leaves and I'm, I come into the, the camp, it, all of that went, it went like that. And I knew straight away, I was like, I'm about to have the best time. Really? <laughs> fucking Hancock walks through the bushes and you were like, and, and you've got to understand, right? You would have all known that was going to happen, yeah. right? You would have seen in the papers. Mm. I didn't cheat the isolation or anything. I did not know that was happening. Wow. And I'm so glad I didn't know that was happening because if I did, I would have, 
I'm sure I would have come up with some, what shall I say when it when he comes out? Because as, as, as a public figure, you kind of have to have a stance on him being there. So, I, I'm, so people, I would, I would people, have thought that. People would have had to sort of concoct like, a, right, this is how I'm going to be with him. You which, would have which to I surely make a choice, did. wouldn't you? Mm. Just naturally. What, you, the question is, what am I going to do? Mm. And there is an answer to that. But I didn't have that. So he just comes to the bushes. And I, in the edit, I laugh for, like, it's like two minutes or something. Oh, well, yeah, just, you laugh for ages. Just, just at, I laugh his, for, at his entrance. Uh, guys, <laughs> the, strip, uh, no, um, the jungle is, the jungle is, what is it, 42 minutes, actually, when you include Adam. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I laughed for 40 minutes <laughs> and they had to cut it down to two minutes <laughs> i was crying i would get my air back i would go again i just kept on watching in my head my mates <laughs> and how much they would be laughing at what was the happening producers are going ptsd's kicking it again. <laughs> he's, he's fully lost it <laughs> they probably did they yeah. probably did I, I just thought it was really really funny and the fact that I just didn't, of course I didn't force it. And actually, actually there is one thing. Before I was put through the, push, you know, pushed through the bushes into the show, you're blindfolded mm. and you're put in like this tent. And I heard the other person <laughs> being put into the, the tent next mm. to me that was mm. gonna go in after me. And I heard him say, sorry. <laughs> That's the one thing I heard him say was, sorry. And he thought and it was me. And I thought it was someone from Major Chelsea. <laughs> I genuinely thought. And you thought, it's a fucking dud yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, it's a dud yet. But I thought it was going to be like ripped. Yeah. You know, good body, strapping figure comes out, six foot or so. And, it was, and it was Hancock, Hancock comes out. Comes in. Hello. <laughs> but yeah. I, I tell you what, it's with. very surreal. I tell it was you, a strange paradox, that whole thing with Hancock. Mental I tell you act. what, with Hancock, how, though. How well? I like, like, as much as. And we had, we actually. We had a bit of argument. We had an argument on this podcast on about, yeah, yeah, about it Dur during the show. During the show, when it was going was, out. Yeah. Well, the whole country seemed to be arguing about. Yeah, it. and and I want to see what your take is on it. Go on. I I argued the fact that you know, Pardon okay, the, the the arguments for and against, right? Where so Matt Hancock, what he did, uh, why is he then allowed to go on a TV show, being paid all this money, and uh, be given some sort of career and all these different things, when actually, you know, he created laws or he broke the rules and did all, we know all the things he's done wrong, right? I sort of had an argument where I sort of said, well, look, you know, he was given an opportunity and why wouldn't he take it? You know, actually, if you want to get across at someone, perhaps get across at ITV because they were the ones who gave it to him. He didn't plead for it or whatever for it. And I know what he's done wrong, but also part of me thinks that a lot of people have done a lot of things wrong. And if you truly in your heart of hearts want to change that around, I think that's a good thing to do. That was my argument for it. I think. Right. And what did you say? <laughs> you can I imagine said, it was different. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just trying to avoid talking about this. Could you, could you yeah, 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 yeah. And what did you think? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think? Anyone else in the room? In response me? to that. Yeah. And yeah. No, your... I, just, I just thought it set quite a, a bad precedent where you sort of had this transition from, from politics and people who are in power and make quite weighty decisions that impact people's lives and yes. can kill people, it turns out. And then uh, there's a transition into entertainment. And it's a bit. It's, How it's, much do you it's, not it's, want to talk about this? It's it's so a very, make a comedy big old fucking and, pussy. And, and, and I don't think it's necessarily like you know his fault. Of course, he wants to try and get redemption. He's going to do what he can because you know he fucked up. I think. But I don't see what's wrong with it's, that. It's more a look at the, the society and why we're kind of allowing this transition the, the, to happen. The, the reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it is because when we went, when everyone was on that show and we all got along, and I feel like we did all get along. At, I think it's then difficult for me to get along with someone in, in person. And all right, that show is, it isn't reality. It's a, it's a distortion of reality. It's entertainment, but it's real people, mm -hmm. you know, and you are feeling real things when you're in there. And I, I didn't even make a choice. You know, I wanted, to, I wanted to get along with everyone that, mm. you know, I just did. And, um, and I've, and I, you know, you feel for anyone that's put, it, you feel for anyone, I think, when you've been the kind of what, the- The, the, the other side of it. The focal point. For uh, the focal point, right, thank yeah. you. The focal point of, of, of like a country honing in on you. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you've, you feel, you, you understand that. You certainly understand that more than anyone that hasn't. 
been in that position. Mm. And uh, that wh wh whether you, you like someone, you hate someone, uh, if you know what that's like, you know how much it can destroy a person, a family, their, maybe their, even their whole life, their whole, the, 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 way they, the way they see themselves forever. You really don't know the, con mm. you know, the consequences of that. And I, I've experienced the, the things that most people won't have been through. Whether people think I deserved it or not, that's, that's up to them. Um, but it, uh, so, so, you know, he's in that position and you get along with, and obviously we, you know, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't a health secretary. Mm. Were you not? For the country, no, I, I applied. <laughs> I, they, they, sake, they, they, I, I, had, I had an interview. They, yeah, I was close. Um, but I think then, for me to then, uh, and him and Boy George came to my show in Soho Theatre, which is banging, that's great, which is very surreal. Me, Boy George, and Hancock. <laughs> after that was my, that was the list on my, on my show to go afterwards to go with Matt Hancock and Boy George for a drink. Very surreal. I I just I did I did comedy and I talked about this in a special, but I did comedy to make people laugh, to be liked, all mm. of those things, and literally the opposite happened. Happened, and that was uh, you know that was just unimaginable. That Crushing, was totally, yeah, I can uh, imagine. It, 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 but I was I I said it was like um, David Attenborough, him going to make one of those documentaries about animals and about the blue planet and the planet being in danger, and uh, and then going to recycle. Um, you know, a plastic bottle and accidentally burning down a rainforest. Mm. Yeah, that's and literally going, what it is. This is not. This I is not what I was trying to save to do. the planet. I didn't but, know that you burned down a rainforest. You fucking idiot! No, I know, but I was trying to save. Oh, oh I, no! I guess, I guess also as like an observational comedian, you can't really ignore it either. You have to sort of pay uh, your tribute to it and go, "This happened," and you almost have to embrace it. I guess. Well, I think there was a story. I went. I, I wrote. I wrote a st show about you. Know, this what. This what happens. You do a podcast. You end up talking about this for the whole thing. I did, no, I, we're I did, not. We're going to get off. I wrote a show about it, and I went away. And I. But I couldn't. This was the mad. Is I couldn't. Right. So I'm, I'm sure you know. You know. Of course you do. You know how comedians work. Is you write the stuff, and then you go and try it out, mm. and there's a bit of editing, and the the, the audience are the editor. And they go, we like that bit, we don't like that bit, basically. Through mm -hmm. laughter, right? And you refine it. Now, I couldn't gig because when I got up, got up on stage, people would walk out. People would get up and walk on. Are get, you they'd, serious? They'd get up, they'd walk so out. People would get, man, yeah, can you imagine? Literally. And, it's not uh, even demoralizing. I haven't, I haven't, is, haven't even said anything yet. No, but it's not <laughs> even demoralizing. It's, that is um, crippling. It was, it, 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 it was horrific. And it's a, you know, it's a comedian's worst mm. nightmare. And and also, the way I was kind of being portrayed, I think, and I, this is now my own, this is my interpretation of it, was as kind of like this bad, you know, this kind of like bad boy, <laughs> you know, like this kind of edgy. But that's how I look. It's kind of seen. You know, every time it was like, is that, is that what you came up with in your head? Like, <laughs> it's not like edgy bad boy. Right? Like edgy, I'm an edgy bad boy. They're leaving because they're so scared. They don't know what I might do. <laughs> That fucking hard nuts. I can't course. believe I just, I'm not sleeping tonight. I'm not sleeping tonight. I'm going to be in bed yeah, going, yeah, yeah. edgy bad yeah. boy. You won't sleep, you edgy bad boy. You'll be, be, out, on, be out in the town. I right can't now. believe I said edgy bad boy. <laughs> you should have stopped me. Stop you should have like, felt. I think he's going to say edgy yeah, bad yeah. boy. Don't yeah. say edgy you bad boy. You would think you were like Ryan from the OC. <laughs> this is something like edgy bad boy. Edgy bad boy. But, but, but basically, but my, I know what my, you mean, my yeah. comedy is, 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 is nothing of the you know there was no talking about sex and drugs and all of that stuff it was meant to be kind of for everyone mm. and then it was i would go on stage and it, and what i was what i do was then confused with this image of me and then that made it really hard because then you're leaning in something that you're not in terms of comedy because you feel like you have to go into it and then you're mm. not being authentic to yourself oh you just do and, and what do you yeah what and do what you do, do you do so so i had to write i went away I went to America and I wrote a, sh I wrote a show. I've never done this before. This is fucking wow. mad. I don't think anyone's done this. I genuinely, I wrote a show for an hour. Uh, the, the show was an hour, so I didn't write it for an hour. It took me a month. <laughs> no one's ever done this. Yeah. I wrote a show for an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, co the cocaine in America is very strong. <laughs> but I then flew back. Ramesh mm. let me, the, the gorgeous man that he is, let me do 
40 minutes of it before him because they, because the, the, the idea then was if you're there to see Romesh, which you bought a ticket to see Romesh, if he goes, this guy's my friend, people are go, oh, okay. It's, you're people accepted. Go, oh, right. He's yeah. friends of Romesh. You must be all right then. And so they let me do two, like something like two 40 minutes. I did two 40 minutes. Then I went on tour. Wow. Didn't try any of it. I just had to. How risky is that in terms of comedy? It's mental. It is fucking mental. Mm. Your comics take a year, two years building their show. I wrote it in a month, said it twice, and then took it on tour. It, it, well, because uh, you, you didn't want to deal with the walkouts and things that you just, it was too much. No, you just got to go and do it. Couldn't. You couldn't test how it. Could yeah. you men how could you, you mentally deal can't. doing stand-up where people are meant to be laughing and instead they're going, oh, this cunt, and getting up and walking out? It's, it's impossible. Oh, my. <laughs> but you know, yeah. I, and there's so and I don't want to go on it because I want to talk about comedy things like that. But I just want because we do we talk a lot about we talk a lot about mental health and stuff on this podcast. And um, have you never sorry have you never had any bad? We've, press? Had, we've had loads of yeah yeah, yeah had no I have I have and and also Did it affects you. Well, it, it massive yeah it massively affects me. I didn't I didn't mind so much about comedy stuff like that, but also um it. It, our line of work was almost encouraged to be yes. a, pretty bad. I was so, going to say this. Yeah. It was almost like celebrated a little bit on us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do it on something like yours because it's more real, I guess. Then it's like, oh my God, he's the worst. Well, no, it's, like, it, yes. it, it, um, it's, yeah, it's different. But in terms of, to, to build, you know, I, I've, I, the, the real problem with mental health, what happens is something bad happens to you, you, you close off, you lose connection, you lose purpose, all those kind of things. And that feels slightly what would have happened to you in a big kind of way, because you would have gone, holy shit, what I was born to do has been flipped. Like the reverse I wanted to happen yes. has now happened. Yes. My ultimate fear, all of my insecurities totally. come out. So that happens, you then go into yourself, that really breaks an individual. And, you do, and I imagine that must have really broken you. How do you build yourself back from that? So... I had to make a decision that I, I knew that if I, because I, I was a massive pisshead, loved drinking, mm. loved getting on it. Like, you know, that was what I, that was what, that ended up being kind of what I lived for. It, you know, you got into comedy because that's what I wanted to do since I was 10. And, and then the booze just became, and the partying, just became more important to me. It was like, that was the thing. I remember watching Amy. You've seen that amazing documentary. Yeah, it's Wines. amazing. And there's a bit where I think her friend is saying this in a, in a voiceover that when she tried to stop all the, 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 the drink and drugs, she realized that that's actually what she, that was the bit. That was her that, thing. That was what she was doing it for yeah. was so that Keeping she could have that almost, gig yeah. and, then, and, then get on, and then get on it. And I really recognised that. I really recognised, you know, it'd be like you'd get a gig, you get like a, a big, you know, you could like an Apollo or something and you go, oh man, imagine the party afterwards. Really? And it stopped being about it itself. So I knew, I knew that with, with how much I had, uh, how much it was destroying me as a person, that if I if I did if I didn't quit booze, there would be nil chance, nil chance mm. of me becoming within an inch of fulfilling the things that I felt like I was, you know, here to do comedically and all of those things. Mm. And that if I did quit alcohol, and I rediscovered the love that I had for it as a ten-year-old boy, mm. <laughs> but that's true. I know it's yeah. weird. That that then then there was a chance there was a chance that I could claw things back. And that, that you know, that, that and I, I, you know, that I was never, you know, I should be clear. I'm not someone that woke up and had a drink or, no. or, or ever did a gig pissed or, you know, he was pissed at work or anything like that. I was, I've never, in fact, I never had a drink. You like the party gig. afterwards. Yeah, it was all mm. about that. So I love partying, you know, for Matt, the chaos, yeah. loved chaos. Same. Always the chaos. chaos. Right? Tom Carriage said it, Tom Carriage when he gave up booze says, I miss the chaos. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The, the chaos. Yeah. Oh, he just what's gonna happen? Yeah. And it's, actually, the irony is, it's it's kind of not chaos. You kind of you, you, you kind of know each yeah, time you know after, after ten years of yes. slamming it. You're like, I actually know this to a T. <laughs> you're gonna end up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna punch this guy. <laughs> no. So, so have you? Are you then sober? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not drank in years, dude. That is nice. 
it, it, just by what it looks like. No, you're like really, dude. It's, you look like you. <laughs> it's it's it, that is so funny. It's my biggest crypt, kryptonite. I, I think for me, I think for me, um, I've flirted with this since 26, 27. For sure. I'd say as you, love the party. Love to, I thought alcohol made me funner, better, all these different things. And I just love, I love the chaos. And it's every single time going back to things like, oh God, I just think I should net it. And do you, have you seen things, you know, like relationships, everything just go from here to here, having given up? But, but what, first of all, what you do is I think what happens is you are, you are, you are going to have to deal with, you, you you're gonna have to deal with whatever it they was call it escaping. white knuckling don't they i've not heard that yeah like holding on to a roller coaster you when you white knuckle oh, is that when you give up well when you give up you have to deal with what's going on as as a, do you mean because there's a reason why you're drinking well what, you, you know i was that, a very i and still am but not god not half as much as i used to be very socially uncomfortable mm. very um very like and I know socially uh, anxious or socially social, so, so, socially and well anxious, anxious, but really un uncomfortable and quite and quite um uh what's, oh, what's the word where you do, you don't like people um, <laughs> misanthropic <laughs> Mis what is misanthropic misanthropic is is you know just kind kind of naturally dislike people people made me feel uncomfortable mm. really but but yeah and I would drink to deal with that and drink and drink to talk to girls as well you got to uh, you know I was at school I was a you know. I wasn't particularly <laughs> popular. I was, you know, you know, like when people would go to music gigs and stuff, I was going to comedy clubs on my own. What? Yeah, I go to comedy and go on my own. At what age to is the this? Point where, well, this is after school, so this is 17. Sure. Right? I would go to comedy, I would go to the Comedia in Brighton every Sunday on my own if my friends couldn't join me to the point where the security started to see me and go, just go in. Because it's just this weird kid. Just felt sorry for you. So yeah. Just don't worry about it. Just, just go in. It's fine. So, but alcohol it allow it allowed mm. me to be comfortable with myself. That and I, rem I can almost remember the first time I drank at a pub. It was like, and breathe. Mm. Oh, I'm all right. I can talk to people. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm socially. I'm fine. Let's get this party, girls. Yes. But when I stopped drinking, that all, I had to just deal with being uncomfortable and fight it. And you could, but then you can fight it and you go, I, like for example, wow. for example, I went to, I was in a, a Harry Enfield's last sketch show. Amazing, right? Yeah. And it was brilliant and a dream to be working with someone like Harry. And Harry picked, I just got the part, didn't have to audition. Harry just went, you're in it, do this. Amazing. Mm. But we went to the screening. And you know what it's like with these things. Afterwards, lots of booze, lots of people you're quite, so, you know, uncomfortable with acquaintances, yeah. maybe people you met once. Before it would be, just, you know, get the, maybe drink, have a drink before you get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Just so that to ease all of that. And I just couldn't operate outside of alcohol. And and now it's like, turn up, watch the thing, come out. You are uncomfortable. It's not like I'm not, it's not like I don't drink and now I'm comfortable with everyone. No, but you it's just like, deal with be it. Be deal with it. Be uncomfortable. Watch the thing. Go out. Make sure you say bye to Harry. Thank Harry. Mm. And thank the people on your way out and, and and go. And life's fine. I didn't need to. God, if I could just tell like 25 year old me, you don't need to get absolutely <laughs> cunted to watch a screening, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone else is just having a drink and shorts. <laughs> climbing <laughs> Sean, like, Sean, Sean how is the screening? What? <laughs> What's going on? It's just He's punching through the screen to get this. Off head, my head nuts. Butt, head butts Enfield. Five in the morning at Soho. I know. Just what were you up to? Yeah, I just went to a screening. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. But and it, what's so funny is that actually... Actually, it's just that slightly insecure child within you totally. that is just screaming out. Totally. And, mm. and, it's, and it's so funny. It's so weird because... To go to a screening, using that analogy, to go to a screening and just watch it and then say bye and yeah. leave, it's totally cool. It's fine. The weird thing is to do all the other stuff that was happening before. Yeah, there, there's that feeling that you're such a like, I don't know, you're almost like a loser. I had that so deeply ingrained yeah, in me. Absolutely. If I didn't stay till 4 a.m. And, like, and there was some mad story, then it was like, he's a bit of a kid. But that's the, that's the, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and I'm like, this is, this is, this is really hard. Like, I, I can't do this every night. Yeah, but that's, but that's the wanting to be accepted. That's the acceptance. Oh, yeah, it's all, it's yes, all, it's all kind that. of mixed yeah. in, isn't absolutely. it? Yeah, um, absolutely. My, I, 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 people, people want to know why you don't drink. Mm. And I was And they think you're only, crazy if you don't. But there's only two reasons that you don't drink, right? 
You're boring. Right. You're too much fun. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's either alcohol just never really agreed with me yeah. or I fucked a badger. <laughs> it's that 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 is it. That those are the only two reasons. It would end the conversation quite quickly, which I quite like. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't no, ask me again. Sure, and, and also, by the way, but I just want to say I appreciate you talking about that because um, I imagine how hard it is for you to talk about these things and it's boring for you, I imagine, because it's all that happens. It's not boring. No, it's, it's not, not boring. boring, but talking about the stuff that it's did scary. happen. It's scary. You go, oh, am I going to... You do go, oh, am I going to be... Is there going to have a story about me and I'm going back to it? There's that, but it's fine. It's how fine. has your comedy been since you're sober? The comedy is much better. Really, the comedy is 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 much, much writing, much confidence better. on stage, everything, or uh, every aspect of it is better. But by so so much, because mm. I said this before, before you sat down, and uh, we have a lot of friends in common in the comedy world, and yes. I and I I I that's the world that I wish, like I wish I had had the confidence to go into, like it's never had, and they all say. All, all, it's true, and I've said this, and I'm going to say it. I know this will probably embarrass you, but I, but I do want to say it. All your comedian friends say the best comedian that they know is, is Ramesh. <laughs> it's Ramesh. Yeah. yeah, they all say it yeah, yeah. when talking about you. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really, it's do you agree? <laughs> yes, yes. But agree. they all they all say they all say the best comedian that they know is Sean Walsh. <laughs> And you said quite rightly, you said- You're doing the Matt Hancock laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uncomfortable. No, but it's true. But, it's, but also, I want to get, you, you did say a very good thing. You, you said, Sean, the really annoying thing is that within the comedy circle, I'm really respected and people love me. And it's amazing. They think I'm a great comedian. Outside of that, I'm, I'm, people don't know that. So why I actually said this. Yeah, I'm both. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, yes, outside of comedy, I'm underrated. <laughs> But that must also be so, very modest. Yeah, but that very must be modest, so though. frustrating at times, right? As well, because you, you, you. I think I think that I was on. Uh, I started comedy just turning twenty one, and I was on telly. I think by the time I was twenty three, to get really any good at it, it would take about ten years. Mm. What were you doing at twenty three? Stand, stand up. No, but as in, what were you on telly? You're doing Apollo and things like, like that. I mock the week and oh my stuff like that. God. Yeah, and so you know, I did not. I did not have a fucking clue what I was doing. Not a clue. And I got a lot of big jobs that I was no way ready for. Like, just what? Wow. You look back, you're like, what are you? And, when I, and it's scary now because I'm 37 now. I'm at an age where if I meet someone that's 24, I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, I can't believe what I was doing yeah. at 24. Oh my god! And I was not, I I was not really ready. So I think, I, and of course I tell myself this. I think I, you can only make a first impression once, and I was making a lot of those first impressions too early on in my career. Mm. And I, I, of course, I think, God, if I just held back, if I just held back, and then done something on telling, you know, when when I'd been going ten years, I'd be fucking here. Wow. What? what do you think? You're like, you're looking at me like, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't think it would have worked out. But no, it's a cute, it's a cute thought. But I, that's, you know, the way you tell the, that's insane. The, you're, these are the excuses I'm coming up with. <laughs> yeah. Not just, it might just be because you're a bit of a cunt. It, it's funny that people, that it, people say in comedy that it takes 10 years to become good. But then what, then does. why were, why you know, are you getting you, your you, usually, you know, usually. Yeah. It, so seems, to, it seems to sort of change in terms of their like propulsion. I'm going to sound word. like such a cunt. No, no, John, you I don't. Am, don't I, I, oh I, my I God. I can see it. I can no, see no, you, it. Are you joking? Oh, God. You, oh my oh, God. God. You're, just, <laughs> you're not. You're sounding so <laughs> great. Okay. I swear to God. All right. And also what's so good is you're being truthful and honest. You know, Joanne McNally, take it for example. So there we go. No, mad, I, mad as a chair. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing, right? And she's amazing, incredible, incredible. One of the most naturally gifted stand-up comedians you will ever meet. She's Just so good. I spoke. I was speaking to uh, probably a mutual friend, Tom Lucy, right? Yeah. Tom Lucy, great guy. Yes. Um, he says what Joanne McNally has nailed, rightly or wrongly, is that she um was doing the circuit and whatever for ten years, maybe longer. And she was doing great and stuff like that. She then gets a hit podcast. Yeah. She blows up oh absolutely massive, but she's refined it. So she yes. has blown up. And so she is ready to go on stage in front of stadiums and whatever. And, and she has had that experience all the entire time. So she's a 10 year, 12 year, 15 year comedian. Yeah. And so she's ready for it all. And actually sometimes you get hit 
with opportunities too early. Yeah. And that's quite that's right. The, that's the story I tell myself. You know, we don't know the, the parallel universe. But but yes, I think, um, I do, you know, you watch, I sometimes, I mean, like on, on Instagram, I've, I, the stand-up clips I post are from my DVD, right? <laughs> DVD. And I see some of the clips that I'm posting on my own Instagram and thinking, this is shit. This, what the fuck was this? It was on DVD. It's rubbish. But, but I think Why also it? <laughs> because I've got nothing else to post. But but it's I, new content. I know. Should we make some clips now? Should we make clips <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, I. But also with your comedy, Sean. You're you know, and I want to look. I want to read like oh, this God. thing, and I want to read this thing, right? So nice. you know, you you go through all of this this hard time, your comedy beca becomes this thing that you, you're kind of not being yourself and all these different things. Um, and then The Guardian has described you as the best observational comedian of his generation. Uh, the Edinburgh Awards I... nominees last UK tour show after this one, I'm going home ended with a standing ovation around oh. the country. Oh my God. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's true. I just want to say that. So, so... <laughs> You're obviously doing something right for sure with all those things. And what's, a, what's amazing, it feels like, is that you have, life started so quick and so fast. You went into this moment that kind of knocked you back, but yes. you've now come back into knowing yourself better. So actually what happened to you in your past, what's happened with all these things that's happened actually is a blessing. You stop drinking, your comedy's better, all, all this stuff, you know yourself. I have a family better. now. You have a family, you've yeah, had a yeah. kid, you've just had a baby. Yeah, yeah. You've got a beautiful girlfriend, all yeah. this stuff, you know. And so actually all the stuff that hit you is probably the best thing that happened to you in a weird kind of way. There, there, there is that. Oh, there no. Is, well, no, oh, no, 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 that's, that's a bit, that is a massive philosophical kind of mm. quandary, isn't it? You know, yeah. but, but obviously, you know, I did, exactly. I'm, I met my partner and we've had a baby and life and life is good and comedy is good. And, and yeah, it's, it's still, I don't know. It's like that. So would you, does that, that means you have to go, that means you, you have, have to, to go, go through, through that again. <laughs> would to, you, to would you go that. through that again? Well now, yes, absolutely. Wow. Because I have my, well, I have my source. Strictly what, what is, was uh, is coming <laughs> soon next year. So. Yeah, go back. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> best off. Yeah. Uh, but no, I've got a daughter. If I go, if I don't, if I don't, best oh, like, best off. Sorry, I want to let. I was underrated. <laughs> Where did you come again? I got to the final. What? <laughs> yeah, I got to the final. Well done. <laughs> Yeah. Bloody well done. Yeah, I'm just that. resilient. Yeah, I just kept going. Oh. That's amazing. It's hard, that show. But, but. I bet my. Sorry, I bet. I, did you do Pasta Doble? Yeah. I bet mine was better. Mine was unbelievable. Was it, did you use yours in the final? No. What did you do for the final? Uh, oh. For the final, I did. Um, I don't care about this. Break I have a Pasta Doble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did I'm, like a salsa and a, and, a, and a break dance thing, and then I did oh, something yeah, else. I yeah. Break dance. Yeah. yeah. Wait, hold on. So, so, you, so you're saying because you've got your daughter and you, you've got your life now and all things, you would go through all of that again to get where you are? You, 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 you would, yes. Because you would, ha because you would have, have to. to. Mm. Because you would, otherwise, you wouldn't have your daughter, which would. Yeah, so true. Yeah. What question? This is nearly as good as my first question. I asked you. you know, so would you? Yeah, would you go back and do all of that again? Or <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> sounds like, <laughs> sounds like you what you'd ask, ask Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> which you, yeah. you will lose your daughter. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll do it all again. Yeah. How? Oh God! How? Do, I want to ask you a few more things. I want to ask yes. you this. So comedy. Let's. Just before we get on to your family and because that's just amazing. With comedy. You used to go to these comedy clubs in Brighton, 17 years old. You used to walk in there, you used to watch the community by yourself. Is that where you're from? Yes. Brighton. Yeah, you used, to, you used to do these things. That's what, what you think. <laughs> no, it's a lovely place. I grew up not too far away, near Chichester. So kind of same yeah. ends. It's really quite far. It is quite far, actually. Now, now that I've, I've sort of brought it to light on the podcast. They're on the coast. They're both on the coast. It's relatively coastal. It's not even on the coast. It's not even on the coast. Okay, it's right. not on right. the coast. You can, you can get there in half an hour. We, we used to go down occasionally. Okay. On the weekends. Yeah. Yeah, so. but, I, but I want to ask this. Glad that we bonded over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, any more questions? Yeah. You, you've, got, you've got legs, I see. Um. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to yes, ask you right, this sorry. question. I want to ask you a question. Sorry. 
because comedy is interesting, right? Like you go to these comedy clubs, see these comedians, and because you've been seeing comedy in itself and different comedians, that would typically lead you to going, okay, fine, I'm going to create a character. And that's actually the bad thing to do. And comedians typically at the beginning of their journey, they start trying to be a character and they, they find out, well, that's not quite me. With you, you do observational comedy and you're very good at it. That suggests that you, you haven't gone down the route of creating characters within your comedy. You're very much authentic to yourself, which is hard to do at the beginning. Well, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I, I, do, I do know what you mean. You, so you talk about like personas. Yes, and exactly. Those, yeah, in stand up, they're called. And, and, and um, well, I think uh, uh, there was a persona that I was trying to, you know, develop. And mm. then what happened happened. And you, and I, and, and I've kind of alluded to the fact that it then made it very difficult to go and do my, let's call it my act. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. it's, my, it's my act, mm -hmm. right? You can't, how can you do your act now when all anyone is thinking about is that? And I can't address that as the act because they don't know it's an act. They think that the person that's just come up is, is the person that also did that. Mm. And they're kind of different. So what I had to do then is just address that head on as me. And that's what I did in the YouTube, YouTube special called God. Kiss. And then the follow-up show, which was called Sean Walsh is dead, happy now. <laughs> <laughs> Very upbeat show. Yeah. But that was about, that was about, about you know, it's got a continuation of that, about my dad's, um, dad's a heroin addict. And Your dad was? I, yeah, 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 my, my, my whole life. And Hold on, let's start this podcast again. <laughs> This is <laughs> fuck. Was that in the notes? Where's the research? <laughs> what was What's it in What's going the on? Fucking was heroin it addicts. That <laughs> shit. That wasn't in the notes. <laughs> fuck's sake. Mention of shit. heroin. Are we joking? That's going <laughs> clickbait for days. <laughs> Why the fuck are they being? <laughs> 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 so my dad. This is true story. My, my, what? My dad, my, and I tell this in the show. So no one addiction and all and all, all the, the chaos. Is chaos. What about. Always mm. chaos. But they, 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 um, and I talked about this in the show. And uh, my, my, and this was my upbringing. It's mine and my brother's upbringing. We, he was so, so he was once so off his face that me and my brother were playing FIFA ninety seven mm. on the PS one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Indoor court or or the outdoor one? Because you could play. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. Well remembered. Yeah. Very, yeah, kind of grey indoor court. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I always thought it should be wood. Yeah, yeah. But Sometimes I think one of them was wood. Maybe okay. later on, later okay. on, a wooden a wooden football pitch. Maybe that was. I a, can't believe this is what we're talking about. I've just dropped the yeah, yeah. dad was yeah, yeah. Again. yeah, but what was the flooring? Yeah, what yeah, type yeah. of which was way it? were the slabs of wood? Yeah, was yeah. it was it oh, like, boo hoo? Yeah, let's get back on. <laughs> David Ginola on the front. Yeah, yeah, class. Right, okay, yeah. so um, me and my brother played uh, uh, FIFA on the PS One, mm. and uh, we're on one sofa. My dad was on the other sofa. And he thought he was watching Match of the Day. Do you remember the graphics yeah, yeah, yeah. of a PS1? <laughs> You're joking. I'm not. Uh, Fucking hell, I can't believe QPR playing QPR. <laughs> Where is he from, Brighton? Spain. He's from Spain, can't you tell? It is fucking strong skag back <laughs> in the 90s, Jesus. Skag? That's Spanish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish. Yeah. No, no, he's spot on. It's called Skag. Skag, Smack. I love that you're laughing at this. The name. The... Sean, hold on, hold on. I, the, uh... uh, that is chaotic as a child. Yes. Ha when did you realise that... When your dad was it's taking probably it. that day. No, but, no, but when did you realize? Maybe this is an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but John, when do you realize that your dad <laughs> is is an addict, or, or was it always normal for you? When do you suddenly go, oh, hang on a second, something's not right here at home? Me and my brother knew from an early age that there was this thing that he did that he smoked. By the way, mm. he smoked it. He didn't uh, inject <clears throat> in front of us. And he did, he didn't anyway. But he he smoked it, and he smoked. He would smoke it in front of us. He, but he did. We knew there was this thing that he did. And if he did that, he was in a good mood and we would get pocket money. So we, you know, I, I would be, he would come home from work and you'd be able to tell through the silhouette in the stained glass window on the front door. Mm. You could tell even by what his, his posture was doing, whether he had had it or hadn't had it. And you would see if it was kind of, if he was bouncing wow. up and down like that. It's like, dad's in a good mood. Dad's going to be fun. Yeah. And if he wasn't, then you didn't really, he just went upstairs and he went to bed and had his come down and, and that oh and that. And so you've got this two, it was like two extremely different people 
to ex from two extremely different ends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, but you've got to understand, as I say in, in the show, that was my normal. That mm. wasn't, I loved my childhood. I don't look back at my childhood as this difficult, abusive time. Mm. What, when it, I think became, when it was, when it would become an issue was, was really as I got older. And, and, and when I started comedy, you know, comedy is what's so beautiful about it when you, when you join the business is that there's, there's an anyone's allowed in policy. And it doesn't matter what class you are, what color you are, what gender you, every, everyone come in. Now there might be difficulties with, you know, where you could get in it, but mm. the bottom level, ev mm. everyone's welcome. Mm. Come on it. But, but it was just then meeting all these different people from all these different walks of life. And I, it, it became apparent that my, this life that I had led as normal. a child and growing up is, is not normal. And this is not mm. what, you know, and I couldn't identify. I, I sometimes think that doing, as people call it, observational comedy and that trying to connect with the audience was always me trying to, to try and be like other people sure. because actually I wasn't. And actually yeah, I'd had a different- normal. Yeah, and right. to try and go, mm. you know that thing that we do? And everyone laughs, so you go, oh yeah, thank God I am like other people. Wow, always, that's, 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 what, that it's all, that's all about. what That makes so much sense. That connection. Like, that I, think, connection. I think all creation is really, you create to then fit, like get that feedback and you go, oh my God, I'm part of- It's so fun. Uh, yeah. It's so fun sharing and mm. connecting and laughing over that thing that you both mm. understand, that you both have in, in common. It, that, you know, that's, that's what it is. And actually, as I got older, I think I felt that in real life, in real life, less and less. Like I'm not, like, I'm not like these mm. these people. So we didn't have a table. Do we know? You know, we never sat around a table. We never ate dinner around a table. Um, we just eat on your lap. Or we just, just eat on the lap. We just play it up into the bedroom. There wasn't a t like a table where the family sat. My dad. There was a little coffee table that my dad would use to smoke spliffs and and heroin. But there wasn't there wasn't that that kind of that sense of family. Mm. Yeah. that you think of in a traditional sense. We all have our own intricate, complicated way of loving each other as a family. We, of course we do. And QPR, my football team, was a massive part of that. You know, my dad, that was the one constant, that was the one thing I felt like my dad did that dads do, is he took us to QPR. He, so must, he must have been very confused about how the season was going. <laughs> He's yeah, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure they won seven nil. Like, Dad, that was that was FIFA. Just just to let you know now. <laughs> yes, you're right. But, but that was the constant. I, that well, that was the thing that I and 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 it's no coincidence. I think then, you, or maybe it is. But then when I moved to London, when my manager said you got to move to London, I moved to Shepherd's Bush, got myself a QPR season ticket. Mm. I buy my brother's QPR season ticket. And we go, that's mine and my brother's thing, mm. is that. And it was, th that's probably the thing I identified as, as being that sense of family and trying to continue that. Mm. So then going into comedy, you must've felt that connection because it is a very family sort of area. You get accepted in. Oh man, when you go, you, in com when you join comedy, I don't know if you have this in, in any other line of work that you've done, but you when you, when you start comedy, you, you're like, here are my freaks. Mm. The just the misfits of the world mm. all coming together, all weird and odd and peculiar mm. in their own way. And it all binds us. And it's just that it's this happy, it's such a, the, the best time, you know, and I've done Apollos, I've done, I've even done the O2, not my own show, but been part of the guard, done the O2 shop. No, but I did the, like the gala and stuff like that. Mm. Bro broke onto stage. The, the, <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. not dead. <laughs> it was a joke. It was, yes. it was a joke. <laughs> but the, um, but the, be the beginning is the, was, was the best bit. I still think that. I still, it was all, it was all the unknown and mm. it was all ahead of you. It was, it was the most exciting, best, best time of my life. It's amazing because we're actually, what we're all doing as humans is kind of seeking connection weirdly. And it's wherever we find that in our lives in whatever way, which we're seeking a connection and purpose. And it's amazing that you found that in comedy or football, right? That that's where you found that kind of sense of family because it wasn't there when you were younger. Yep, yes. And I, I'm saying possibly. That's possibly. what I think, you know, I think that would, that's kind of, if you told, if you told me that I would kind of put that, 
you know, you go, well, so hang on, the only thing your dad did that was kind of representative of the traditional kind of family values of a, a father taking, the only thing he did was taking you to the QPR game. And then when you could move to London, you move to QPR and you buy your brother's season ticket and you go to QPR. It doesn't, Mm. kind of adds up doesn't it yeah. you go that sounds like mathematically it. yeah if we were to take all emotion out of it which it clearly is quite an emotional thing you're like let's just make it purely numbers that, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. two Stats. plus two equals four yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right let's move on right. yes the uh, <clears throat> so you now got your uh beautiful daughter how has life changed becoming a dad well, it's only been three weeks. Yeah, but I oh, still... three weeks? Yeah, literally, literally yeah. three weeks. Congrats. And I've abandoned her to come here. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did. That's a terrible father. Have you not, I know. Have you not learned? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I uh, no, oh, well, it's, it's not... No, I can't say it's... I would be like... It's I, I, all... I've really noticed. My life has not changed that much. Mm. I, I've just, I've noticed I've spent a, a, a lot more time in, in lifts than I used to. Inten because you have a pram. Oh, right. Because you have the pram. Oh, okay. so, you're just so you have to get a lift instead of just use the stairs or the escalator. I'm not going to lie. This is not the sort of the observation that people normally say when they had a daughter. Normally it's like, oh my God, I wake up and I have just this amazing sense of but I don't think, and joy. And he's but like, I don't think you, actually no, I do. Don't, I don't think you do when you first have a kid. It's like, it's actually, you're just, you're keeping something alive. Really. My, my partner, Grace, is, 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 has been amazing. And we had a quite, a, a, quite a tough birth. We. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, always bring it back to you very difficult for me <laughs> always bring it back to you yeah. no we arrived at the hospital and, and um and it was a what do you call it i undiagnosed breech birth do you know what this is because i didn't undiagnosed uh, when it's when it's it's breached the baby's breached so so you know what breached means i know what breach means you, what does you, breach mean? i know what the word but means, I but not in a pregnancy sense does it when mean the head's head yeah. popped out too soon no wrong something? way round oh, right. oh okay wrong way round but normally that's spotted sooner Right, mm -hmm. and they could just handle it and go. Well, we'll do this, but we arrive and it's and it she said labour and it's like no, she, oh no, that they've got it wrong. The head is the feet, bum, feet first, and so it's going to be feet first. I I saw, <laughs> I've seen quite possibly the most horrific. <laughs> I think it will be that. Uh, hopefully, will be the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life, which is just a, a foot hanging out, <laughs> an alive foot oh, no. hanging out of my uh, partner's uh, vagine. <laughs> Just like yeah. literally, just sure I, 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 she, my, Grace went. Can you put? Can you cover me with the blanket? And I went to cover of the blanket, and I jumped back, and I went. Oh! And she went. You saw it, didn't you? And I went. No, 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 no. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And it was just a foot. It was literally look, just this little baby's foot, just he's, and it was moving. He's, he's gonna be a QPR fan. Just, yeah, he's yeah. doing kickups with his foot. Did you just like that? She looked like a tripod, like free, like. Something from War of the Worlds. It was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Oh, by the way, I fainted. Do you know this? I I fainted during the birth. No, it was even before the birth. She was she was. I, and the thing is, I was absolutely fine. I was absolutely fine. I I thought I I wasn't anxious about the whole thing. I was totally calm. And Grace was getting the epidural, the, the, the this nasty. You gave yourself a little. I was absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. But so that, she, that, that you know, there's a nurse, midwife, whatever. And and I thought, I'm totally really calm, and that's not like me. Really calm, and just thought that's weird. I feel like I'm going to faint. And I thought, and I thought, I love that. Uh, I'm feeling, in fact, very calm. No, that is okay. Really calm. No, too no, calm. No, no, this is what happened, right? That genuinely, this is my inner, inner monologue. So As you would hear it, out. if it was a film, right? That's weird. I feel like I'm going to faint, but you're not going to faint because you've got nothing to faint about. You feel absolutely fine. Yeah, it was probably a head rush. And that really does feel like I'm going to faint. <laughs> Oh my God, I think I'm about to go. And I turned to the guy next to me, the nurse, I went, sorry, do, do, do you mind if I... And he, went, and he moved out of the way and I just fell. <laughs> he that straight, thank God he didn't grab hold of the foot. <laughs> the the birth. Yeah, yeah. Birthed my child. <laughs> but I know, but this is, the, this is the crazy thing, right? That's I wake up on this sofa. Yeah. There's Luckily there was this kind of sponge beanbaggy sofa there, right? And I, I wake up and... A uh, nurse is is overlooking uh, me, going, "Are you are you okay?" And it, and it looked like I had been born, <laughs> from my the, my point of view, because I was looking it's up, absolute nonsense. Like this, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. The nurse is going, "Sorry, you know, let's okay. make this about my birth." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
I've been born. <laughs> She's like, are you okay? And I went, yeah. And she went, would you like a cup of tea? And I went, yes, please. And she walked away and I just heard her go, men. Oh, God, really? <laughs> really what she did. <laughs> men. I can't believe that. Sure. I, honestly, that image of the foot. Yeah. It's too much. And, 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 the foot, and, 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 and the Grace going, <laughs> you saw it. And me going, no, 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 no. no. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It was fun. It was absolute moving. Uh, like that and blue by the way because uh, it was no, like you know it's like a <laughs> strange colour yeah <laughs> Smurf's foot oh yeah. Sean honestly dude that is um, hey congrats beautiful yeah it is but it is beautiful it's it's really stunning. beautiful it is <laughs> congrats get, man that's any, amazing any it's, it's you. freaking amazing it's really lovely spending more time in lifts it's really it's really <laughs> nice have you not do you, you have a child? No. I don't have one, no. No, no. No, no, and no interest nah, from that. Not no. after this like, <laughs> ordeal. <laughs> apart from the rebirth. But I think at done. some point, at some point I'm going to... At gonna, some stage. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. It's it's a, a huge commitment that I'm scared of, but... but I'm, uh, no, I don't think there's anything. It's, it's really wonderful. Uh, but, but I mean, it's just at the moment, Grace is breastfeeding and mm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading her Paddington. That's yeah. all really I'm doing. You've just written a show. I've got, oh yes, I'm on tour. If there are people yeah, that and want to come. It's called Back From The Bed. It's so very clever. How many, how many, um, how many, how many dates are you doing? I don't know, but a lot. A lot. <laughs> there's one at Hackney Empire as well. Because the London date sold out and then there's another one at Hackney Dude, Empire. It's amazing. In, so please. Yeah, it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. Very grateful. Mm. And so that's why, yeah, I need to, just to go back to say that when I said like, I, I could have been huge, that I am very happy with the way things are going. <laughs> Please, please don't miss Queen. Please, please don't cancel me. <laughs> but yeah, don't cancel That's me again. Sean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to say a huge thank you for coming. Just, you, you just had a baby. You're, you're, you're going on tour, all these different things. Thank you. She's been so kind. Oh, by the way, I have, I have a podcast as well. Yeah, let's put, let's plug Sorry, in. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry to mention it. I have two. Give it, give it. Plug if you them. want to hear me really moan, I've got one with my good friend Paul McCaffrey called "What's Upsetting You Now." Please come on. Oh, we would love to. It's only love 20 to. minutes on Zoom. And, and we'll, we'll leave the links in the description below All as of well. that stuff. And then one with Jack D, my comedy hero yeah. that I do called Oh My Dog, if you're a dog lover. Jack D is... National oh, treasure. Oh my God. Oh my God, he's just... Go and check out this podcast. Go and check out Sean's Instagram. Go and get his tickets to his show as well. 100% Sean. Thank you so much thank for coming so much. on. We really appreciate it, I appreciate being here. Thank you. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh my God. Oh, sorry.